Hello, so Mrs. V here. This is our second to last here stoichiometry lecture that we're going to do. We have one more. We're almost there, guys. We're through through our second of our third week um, till the end. So keep going. And if you guys have any questions about this stoichiometry, please, please, please get a hold of me. But we're going to talk today. You guys have gone from moles to moles, and then you went from moles to moles to grams. And now we're going to end with this here. We're going to do one more in a couple days, which is limiting reactants. But we're going to go from grams to moles to moles to grams. So this is what we would call a three-step stoichiometry problem. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we mean by three-step. So as always, if you guys are getting really, really confused, you can refer back to your chemistry book. If you're a learner that just needs to read it and see it, then please go ahead and look at pages 360 to 362 there in your chemistry book. It's, it's titled Mass to Mass Calculations, and you can look at example 12.3 in your book. Okay, a couple definitions to start off with. Again, we're gonna start off here with our mole and our mole equals 6.02 times 10 to 23rd things. Really don't have a unit on there. And it also equals X grams, which is our molar mass. We learned about our mole ratio, and our mole ratio is a conversion factor created from a balanced reaction. And it converts moles of one molecule to mole of another in the reaction. And if you're still not clear on mole ratios, please go back to mole to mole calculations and just kind of go back over it. Now, our molar mass is calculated in grams from our periodic table, okay? And it can be written as X grams over one mole or one mole over X grams. Remember, all of our conversion factors can be flipped back and forth. Okay, why the heck do we go from grams to mole to mole to mass, or grams? Why do we do it? Well, first of all, I do not have time to count atoms, 6.02 times 10 to 23rd here in the lab, but I can easily and quickly measure grams. So actually, I use, have been using this pretty much all year with you guys to make different, even you guys learn molarity, how to make different molarity concentrations for reactions to work. And so actually, I use this every day. Um, even in pharmaceuticals, in um, plants that do chemical reactions to make things happen, they do this calculation a lot. Um, I used to do it all the time when I was up working in the pharmaceutical industry and they would say, okay, well, you know, in storage we have so many grams and really it would be more like pounds because unfortunately we're here in the United States. but." grams of say sodium hydroxide now we, we could do a reaction of sodium hydroxide to get whatever we needed and we could sit down and go okay how much can we make how much product can we make um if i have 20 pounds of sodium hydroxide how much of the other reactant am i going to need and i can't really measure it in moles i have to be in grams or here in the united states it, unfortunately most of us had to go from grams then to pounds so there's a lot of conversions going on out there and we convert these all the time out in the industry. This is something we use and it is something that if you ever do any other kind of science, use conversions all the time because the rest of the world unfortunately is not in inches and feet, okay? They're in meters, kilometers. And so a lot of times scientists here in the United States are using any kind of conversions to really do their work, okay? So let's look at a couple, couple examples of how we would do it. So of course, again, we're gonna start with a balanced equation. I've already balanced it here for you. And then we're gonna have our question. So if 45.98 grams of hydrogen is produced, how many grams of aluminum chloride is also produced? So I gave you the molecular formulas here, and we're gonna look. now. Remember, we always, always, always with everything, we're gonna start with our given. So here we are, we're gonna start with our given, which is 45.98 
grams of hydrogen. Notice I did not just put grams, I put grams of hydrogen. This is extremely important as you go into these calculations to keep these units straight is to make sure that you're adding the molecular formula. So our given is 45.98 grams of hydrogen and I want to go all the way to grams of aluminum chloride. So I know that a lot of my ratios are going to have hydrogen and aluminum chloride in it. So I'm going to start with my given 45.98 grams of hydrogen. Well the first thing I need to do is go ahead and convert that to moles. Remember everything in a balanced equation is in moles. We cannot use grams. So we must first of all convert it to moles and the way that we know how to convert to moles is through the molar mass. So we got to figure out the molar mass of hydrogen. And notice we have grams of hydrogen and grams of aluminum chloride. So we really are going to have to figure out the molar mass of both of them. So a lot of times before I start, if I notice that both of them are going to be in grams, I'll go ahead and calculate both molar masses so I'm ready to go ahead. But we'll just keep going. So our given is 45.98 grams of hydrogen. Then you're going to put in number two, the molar mass of the given. Then you're going to multiply. And remember, we want the units we have on the bottom, which is grams of hydrogen, and we want to go to moles of hydrogen. Then we're going to go to our mole ratio, which is directly from our chemical balance chemical equation. So we are in moles of hydrogen, so we're going to put our moles of hydrogen on the bottom, and that's three, which is here. And the top is we want to go to moles of aluminum chloride. That's what we want. And we have two moles of aluminum chloride. But we're not quite done. One more step. We want to go from moles to grams. So again, we're going to need the molar mass of the wanted. And the units we have is moles of aluminum chloride. And we're going to go to grams of aluminum chloride, which is 133.33 grams of aluminum chloride. That is calculated from the periodic table as a molar mass of aluminum chloride, one aluminum and three chlorine. Then we go ahead and we start checking our cancellation of our units. So we have grams of hydrogen, we'll cancel grams of hydrogen, moles of hydrogen, we'll cancel moles of hydrogen, moles of aluminum chloride, cancel moles of aluminum chloride, and I am left with grams of aluminum chloride. What do I want? Grams of aluminum chloride. We have set up our conversion correctly. Then we go ahead and we start calculating. Remember, it doesn't matter what order you divide or multiply in. So 45.98, remember anything on the bottom you're going to divide by, two point, divided by 2.02, .02, then divide by 3, anything on the top, you're going to multiply, so then times 2, and then times 133.33. You notice I kind of skipped over the ones because they don't really do anything. So if we do that, we should get 2,023.27 grams of aluminum chloride. And as you guys are going through these, you'll notice I'm always rounding to the nearest hundred. That's really as far as you need to go, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at another one. So this one, we're going to use our balanced equation again, but now we're going to go from a reactant to a product. Before we were looking at two products, now we're going to go, what if we have so much of a reactant, how much of a product can we make? So if you start with 3,170 grams of hydrochloric acid, how many grams of aluminum chloride are produced? Well, here's our first step. You're going to start with a given, which is here, 3,170 grams of hydrochloride. It is the only number there, so that is our given. Then we're going to go ahead and convert this. It's in grams. It has to go to moles, so we're going to do our molar mass of our given which is calculated in grams goes on the bottom, it's the units we want, 36.46 grams of hydrochloric acid to one mole of hydrochloric acid. Then we're gonna go ahead and enter into our mole ratio and the units we have are moles of hydrochloric acid and we want to go to moles of aluminum chloride. So there's six moles of hydrochloric acid to two moles of aluminum chloride but we're not quite done. Now we need to add in the molar mass of wanted because we need to get to grams. And so the units we have here at the top is now moles of aluminum chloride. And now we have the molar mass of aluminum chloride, which is 133.3. We go ahead and check our units. 
grams of hydrochloric acid, cancel grams of hydrochloric acid, moles of hydrochloric acid, cancel moles of hydrochloric acid, and hopefully you guys are seeing why you need to write the molecular formula there in your units. And then you have moles of aluminum chloride, we'll cancel moles of aluminum chloride, and we are left with grams of aluminum chloride. You go ahead, anything here you're gonna divide by, anything on the bottom you will divide by, anything on the top you're gonna multiply, doesn't matter the order, you will get 3,864.11 grams of aluminum chloride. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more, and then I'm gonna switch over and we're just gonna quickly look at a problem there on your Poggle, and we'll go from there, okay? All right, number three. This is the balance equation, two aluminum, six hydrochloric acid, two, two aluminum chloride plus three hydrogen, okay? You guys, it's the same reaction we've been working with, okay? So it says if 207 grams of aluminum chloride, that's one of our products, was produced, how many grams of aluminum were used? So how much of that reactant was used. So again, we start with our given. So we have our given, which is 207 grams of aluminum chloride here. Then we're gonna put the units we have on the bottom because we need the molar mass of our given. And it's 133.3 grams of aluminum chloride to moles of aluminum chloride. And you'll notice grams of aluminum chloride are now canceled out. So now we're in units of moles of aluminum chloride. And we don't want to stop there because we really want grams of aluminum. Now we're going to add in our mole ratio. And the units we have, which is moles of aluminum chloride, goes on the bottom. And the units we want, we want to get to aluminum. So we've got to convert moles of aluminum. Remember, you cannot go from the moles of one molecule to the moles of another molecule to the grams. That doesn't work, okay? You must go through these steps. There's no way around it. There's no shortcuts, okay? So now we have two moles of aluminum chloride to two moles of aluminum from our balanced equation. Our moles of aluminum chloride cancel. And now we're kind of in moles of aluminum, but we wanna get to grams, so now we need to add in the molar mass of the wanted. And the units we have is moles of aluminum, and the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams of aluminum. And now our moles of aluminum will cancel to leave us with grams of aluminum, which is what we are looking for. Then we go ahead and calculate. Anything on the bottom we're gonna divide by, anything on the top we're gonna multiply by, and we should get 41.89 grams of aluminum, okay? So hopefully you're a little bit clearer Remember, the stoichiometry, the more you practice, the easier it gets. So let's go ahead and look at your Poggle for tonight. So you're going to go ahead, it renumbered for me, but you guys are going to go ahead. You're going to start with this one. It should be numbered 27. I have now done Google Docs for you for all of these and with your name on it, and you're gonna have your own copy and you can go ahead and open those up and just go ahead and type right on it if you like. You can also print them out and still do the pictures, but if you wanna not print them out, if you don't have a printer, if you're having trouble with all that, then go ahead and just type it directly on there if you have a computer. I know on your phone it's a little hard and I will still take Anything you do, if you wanna write out the questions on a piece of paper and send me a picture, any way you can get it done, just get it done. So, when we're looking at these, you're gonna start at 27, okay? And I think this one, it goes for a while all the way to the end, okay? So, you're gonna do, I think, I can't really remember, but <laughs> it had just the end of the paper. I have posted these so that once you finish it, you finish the whole section instead of the entire poggle, okay? So for 27, really for 27, the whole first page is really about them just talking about where did these numbers come from. And remember, as you can see on my lecture here, they're either gonna come from the balanced equation are there income from the periodic table with the molar mass? So remember with these poggles, do not overcomplicate. Just answer the question that they're asking you. They are not trying to trick you, okay? But I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and answer all those by yourself 
And I'm actually going to show you number 34. We're going to go through A, B, and C. There's a couple of them for you guys to practice, but I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a tutorial here like I would in class. Just one more example, I know, okay? So given the following chemical equation, 4 phosphorus plus 5 oxygen yields 2 phosphorus oxides, okay? What is the molar mass of P2O5? I'm really hoping you guys um, are knowing how to do this now, that it's pretty simple. So I'm just going to quickly calculate the molar mass. Remember, it comes from the periodic table, okay? And if you're not even understanding what I am writing here, please go back to the molar mass lecture and look at it again or get a hold of me so that I can get this for get this down for you, okay? So we have two phosphorus and we have five oxygens. And I'm pulling these numbers directly and I am rounding them because it's making it a little bit easier on myself. Okay, so you can round an oxygen. I always round a 16 is 15.99. So let me bring up my calculator really quick on the side here. So we're gonna have two times 30.97 plus five times 16. And again, if you're not really understanding how I did this, please go back to the molar mass, okay? And I got 141.94 grams of P2O5 in one mole of p 2 05. Notice I am still writing the molecular formula. It really makes it easy that I know what's going on. And you'll notice that there's these boxes that are on your Poggle on Google Docs. And I put it in there just so you know where to kind of type, give you an idea of where to type your answer. Okay. What is the molar mass of oxygen? Okay. So then we're going to go ahead and calculate oxygen and it's O2. So it's 2 times 16 which equals 32 grams O2 to one mole of O2, okay? You can tell they're already telling you, you sh if you're in the beginning of a question and they're asking from grams of a molecule to grams of another, you better calculate their molar masses because you're gonna need them, okay? All right, let's go to our last part here, C. How many grams of P2O5 are formed from 3.4 grams of O2, show the math below. So I'm going from grams of O2 to grams of P2O5. Well, my given, number one, we're gonna do our given, which is 3.4 grams of O2. Then our second step, sorry, I do that for <laughs> multiply, but is going to be the molar mass of my given, which is here. And I have grams of O2, so I put grams of O2 on the bottom to one mole of O2, okay? And my grams of O2 will cancel, and now I'm left with moles of O2. So I'm gonna put moles of O2, and I wanna go to, this is my mole ratio is my next step, two moles of P2O5. That come, mole to mole comes from my balance equation. And there's five moles of oxygen to two moles of phosphorus oxide. So I will put five and two. Then I wanna get to grams. Now my moles of O2 have canceled. Now I'm gonna get to grams. I have moles of P2O5. And the only way I can get to grams is through the molar mass, which is 141.94. Okay, my moles of phosphorus oxide now cancel. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and calculate it out. So I will do 3.4 divided by 32. Okay, doesn't matter the order, times two divided by five, and then times 141.94. Point nine four, enter, and I will get 
6.03 grams of P2O5. So that should be your answer. So I'm hoping this has helped you guys as you guys go through the last of this poggle. This can all go on page 105, all of them together. If you want to split it out, that's fine too. If you have any questions, go ahead and get a hold of me. Have a great day.